What's up guys, this is Mr. USA, IFBB Pro Derek Lunsford, and you're watching MD Noble Weekly. Good morning everyone, Christian Duke, MD Noble Weekly Episode 20, brought to you courtesy of IronMagLabs.com, your go-to source for all your bodybuilding and fitness supplements. Today is Wednesday, November the 1st. Can you believe that? 20 episodes. 20 episodes. 5 months. 150 days of MD Noble Weekly. The detractors must be literally in a living hell right now. They've posted threads, they've contacted people, they've done whatever they possibly could to stop this show and for 150 days, when they wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, what do they see? They see a failure. Let's talk about our show today because it's so important to talk about the bodybuilding news. And one of the things that I'd like to say to begin with is that when you report the news, you have to put all loyalties aside. Now, there is a thread at RX titled The Worst in Bodybuilding, and it was posted by a gentleman that took exception to a news report that I did about someone that he considers a friend. Someone that maybe I consider a friend. You know, I don't hate Dave. I don't hate Chris Aceto. But if these guys do something that's newsworthy, I have to report the news because that is what being an objective journalist is about. At MD, we don't have censorship. For example, when Sean Ray left and went to Generation Iron, Sean Ray wasn't banned. When Johnny Styles was fired from RX, he was banned. And many threads about him wishing him good fortune were deleted. And so I think the reality of the matter is, is that, you know, people like to express themselves and they also like no bull, which is no bullshit in their news. And that's why I think people really don't like me so much because I don't acknowledge censorship. When I report the news, I report it as it happens, unfiltered, no bull. Okay. So today I'd like to start out my show talking about Mr. Kai Green, the predator, uh, there are renewed rumors that he will be doing the Arnold Classic, but which Arnold Classic may be the question. As you guys know, Arnold is the greatest bodybuilder that ever lived. He is a phenomenal movie star, a phenomenal elected official. We all know that if Arnold had been born here in the United States, we'd all vote for him for president. But in addition to all these great many attributes, Arnold is also a strategist. So when the IFPB split in this civil war that we're all enduring, Arnold gave the Arnold Classic America the flagship to the IVPL as well as Australia. But he gave Mr. Santoja Brazil, which who knows if that's going to ever happen again, Europe and Africa. Now, when Kai Green suggests that he will do the Arnold Classic, he may be talking about a Santoja Arnold Classic or he may be talking about one of ours. I say one of ours because I feel in my heart loyal to the Pro League and the NPC, although I do not speak for them and I'm not a part of them. Much like I am not a part of MD, though in my heart I feel like I'm part of Team MD. So, whenever I speak, I don't speak for Iron Mag Labs, MD, of course, the MPC, or the IPPL. I speak for Christian Duke and Christian Duke only, and that's an important distinction. Now, Louis Marco, in a recent video titled, Kai Green doing the Arnold Classic, from 3 minutes to 3 minutes 30, misleads his audience. I believe doing so innocently, I hope where he says that Kai Green never was given a direct invitation to the Mr. Olympia and that the only invitation that he received was an indirect one vis-a-vis -a, -vis a cover on Flex Magazine only a mere weeks before the Mr. Olympia. Now that is categorically untrue. Kai was invited directly, much like the Maryland Muscle Machine Kevin Lavroni, by IFB Pro League President and PC President Mr. Jim Mannion. And it wasn't weeks before the show, it was months before the show. It was almost a full contest prep before the show, almost, maybe shy by a week. Kai, disrespectfully, did not accept or decline, simply ignored the most powerful man in bodybuilding. So, Louis, if you happen to see this video and you continue to mislead your audience, then I will change my description from innocently to intentionally. Now, speaking of Louis, he says he will be meeting with Kai in December in Dubai. A very high-level conversation, I'm sure. Also, I'd like to report about the IFBPL staging a new huge win in Spain. The IFBPL will be a brand new stage where competitors will be able to compete to get an IFB Pro League card and compete in the Mr. Olympia. I am very, very thankful to my friend Frank Diaz from Chrome Sups American Muscle Supply 
for inviting Mr. Emilio Martinez, the president of the Valencian Bodybuilding Association, who will be key to the leadership of the IFBPL in Spain, Mr. Santoja's backyard. And it's not so much a question about the fact that we have established a foothold in Mr. Santoja's backyard or that Mr. Santoja will potentially establish one in our backyard with Mr. Wayne D'Amelio. It's not a question of Footholds. It's not a question about strategically placing ourselves. It's a question of who has the better model. And as I've said many times before, the pro league, the MPC model is the best model. Most athletes that are sane will pick that model over anything that they have in a free decision process. Also in the news, the Mr. Olympia Amateur will be held in Medellin, Colombia, February 16th to the 18th. This is open to athletes from all federations and the only way to earn the coveted IFB Pro League card, which will then make you eligible to compete at the Mr. Olympia Pro held in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is absolutely huge as this will be Latin America's premier event to earning a pro card to compete amongst the best in the world in the sport of professional bodybuilding. Next, my Kentucky Muscle Report. Huge thank you to Brent Jones. Fantastic event. I got to room with my good friend Hector Mendoza from MD Latino. A lot of conversations about bodybuilding, the IFBB, Latin America, MPC, everything. Photography, videography, very, very cool time. I got to hang out with Tony Wheeler, Nicolette Spencer, two amazing IFB fitness pros. Very beautiful, very, very hardworking. Got to see my brother, Xavier Skaden. Thank you for your service, Xavius. He is up for an E8 promotion. I got to see his wife, Sarah. I got to see Little X. They are also having their own booth there, living that American dream. Xavius has some killer board shorts. So if you compete in men's physique or classic, classic is coming. Check out Xavius Gaden's line. Fantastic. Also got to interview Matt Mugford, who won the show. Matt is a great guy. He is sponsored by Blueprint Performance, who is a supplement company, but also opened a great supplement shop here in Louisville, across from LAC, Louisville Athletic Center, Westport, where I go. And uh, just a great store. I also got to interview Derek Lunford there. Uh, Derek Lunford is a fantastic bodybuilder, won the Mr. USA. Uh, one is pro debut, top five Mr. Olympian, definitely on the radar. Great interview. And thank you also to Derek for the intro to this show. Uh, also got to meet Monty Mabry, who is a contest prep legend. Uh, thank you so much to my friend Brian Hoydick from TC Muscle for thinking to introduce us. Brian was there as well, and I think Brian is God when it comes to contest prep. As TC Muscle says, we're not there to take part, we're there to take over, and that's exactly what they did. Also got to see my friend Adam Atkinson of See You Later Leaner, another fantastic prep coach who told me uh, privately that he looks up to Brian Hoydick greatly, which I think from one contest prep guru to another is a huge, huge compliment. And these are guys that are just huge in the industry. I introduced Adam to Brent Jones, the Kentucky Muscle promoter, and I hope that you know that they work together in the future because, like I said, Brian, Adam, Monty, these are guys that bring 30, 40, 50 competitors to a competition. It is they're absolutely the greatest in the business. And quite frankly, I think the Kentucky Muscle and the Kentucky Derby Muscle uh, both tied to the Kentucky Derby, which is a world class event. I think you know. If you want more information, log on to KentuckyMuscle.com. I would love to see the Kentucky Muscle become a pro qualifier, at least in some divisions at some point, because like I said, it is a world-class, world-class event uh, run without a hitch, and uh, it really draws out the best of the best in the IFBB Pro League and the MPC. Next, I want to talk about Iron Mag Labs. I've taken a position as marketing director. So in the future, I will be developing, I will be authoring, developing, managing, and executing an athlete program as well as an affiliate ambassador program. Also, any websites that would like Iron Mag Labs to advertise with them will have to go through me. I will assess your offer, your proposal. I will look at your website. I will look at the traffic and I will see how you can make us money. Uh, goodwill is great, but you need to sell me on ROI. If you can sell me on ROI, I will then give my recommendations to the president, Robert DiMaggio, the owner, and he will ultimately decide whether or not to advertise with you. I'm sure you've seen throughout the net that Iron Mag Labs has cut its ads from a lot of the websites, and it's because we want to start out new. We want to have a fresh new look, fresh new advertising, uh, streamlined advertising that is going to bring us money, and we don't want to have a lot of dead weight, and we certainly don't want to waste any of the hard money that we have so again any websites any magazines any companies that would like iron mag labs to advertise with them you will have to go through me 
and I will, uh, you know, uh, assess your proposal. And if I think it's worthy, I will send it up to uh, Robert with my recommendations as well. If I don't think it is, I, of course, I have to uh, say that. And again, uh, please, no one be offended. But again, I this, these are business decisions. This is a business. It's not a charity. So if you have a shitty website that's not generating any traffic, uh, it's probably not going to generate any sales. Okay, uh, the Joe Weider movie, uh, my friend Dan Solomon has been instrumental in that in the planning stages for four years. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get a chance to go on the set. He has mentioned that, so I think that'd be great. Uh, saw a news report from Nick Strength and Power uh, where he says that Sergio Oliva Jr. will be playing his father, Sergio Oliva, the myth uh, in the movie, which I think is fantastic if that happens. Uh, the Straight Outta Compton movie I was a big fan of, but I really didn't like the fact that Little Easy couldn't play his dad. I thought that was kind of an injustice, given the fact that Ice Cube's son got to play his father. But in any event, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, I'm a huge Easy e fan. But the point is, is that and Little Easy is awesome. Very, very good rapper, by the way, uh, with uh, Ruthless. But in any event, um, I think it's great if a father can play, a son can play his father on a movie. I think that's pretty cool. And if that is the case, kudos to them on that. And it's a great movie. I'm super excited to see that. Uh, Kelly Ryan, Parole, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about that and threads about that. I, I really don't have an opinion, you know what I mean? I, I just feel bad for uh, Melissa James, of course, and her family. And, I and I'm not looking to interview Kelly or, or anything like that. Uh, I know that some other folks have said that they would. Uh, it's just, I'm not here to judge other people. I'm just here to say that I would not be interested in that interview. I, I don't need hits that badly. Uh, and I don't think that I ever will. And if I ever do need hits that badly, I'll just probably call it a day and quit because, um, you know, that's just where I stand guys. Um, and then also, um, Brandon Curry will be doing San Marino in LA and he's looking fantastic. I think Brandon Curry should have been top five at this year's Mr. Olympia. I think that, you know, the gains that he made in Kuwait were nothing short of amazing. I'm super proud of him. I think that he is just going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future. And, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it, guys. So, again, I really appreciate you watching MD Noble Weekly Episode 20. Take that to the bank, haters. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. And again, big thank you to IronMaglabs.com, your go-to source for all your bodybuilding and fitness supplements.